Hello, everybody. We're uh, watching our attendee list uh, climb. It's taking Zoom a minute to uh, to get everybody aboard. So uh, please uh, be patient. And uh, we're already at uh, 50 participants. So it's uh, climbing very quickly here. Um, also, I can mention to those who are on right now that um, uh, Minister Jadi is a, a tad late. Nothing, uh, nothing too uh, too drastic, but um, will probably be a minute or two before starting. So please sit tight, and uh, as soon as uh, she's available, we'll get started. Thank you. Again, for those who have just joined us, we're um, waiting for Minister Jadi to come in. She's uh, just a tad late, so um, asking for your patience here. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, Vern. How are you? <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad. I, I, I think we're live right now. So uh, if you like, we'll, 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 we'll just get started, shall we? Um, great. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm Vern Below, a director of the uh, Welland Pelham Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of the South Niagara Chambers of Commerce, we're pleased to be able to present this session to you along with our colleagues from Grimsby, Lincoln, West Lincoln, Niagara Lake, and Greater Niagara Chambers of Commerce, as well as the Niagara Centre Board of Trade of Thoreau. Uh, we also want to thank our sponsors, B4 Networks and Growth Associates, for their uh, time and contribution to make this possible. Uh, thank you for, uh, for joining us this evening. Um, we are now sitting at uh, 70 participants, so uh, we've got a nice count, and I hope everybody's had a chance to get a bite to eat. And, uh, uh, we'll have a very informative hour coming up. Um, our, our format will begin with an update from Minister Jari, uh, followed by a question and answer period. Um, as an introduction to um, the Honourable Melanie Jani, um, uh, was uh, first elected as a Member of Parliament to represent um, Hansik uh, Kelsey-Ville uh, in uh, the House of Commons in 2015. Uh, as Minister of Economic Development and Official Languages, her mandate includes promoting regional economic development and protecting our two official languages. In her previous ministerial roles, uh, Minister Jari had worked with, uh, had worked to promote Canadian culture and to grow and increase the visibility of Canada's tourism sector, uh, something that's certainly very important to us in Niagara. Uh, she's also worked uh, to safeguard Canada's two official languages while promoting the use of French in Canada and around the world, uh, including within the digital sphere. Prior to entering federal politics, uh, Minister Jari uh, founded the Vrai Changement pour Montréal, a party uh, and ran for mayor of Montreal in 2013 under its banner. Minister Jari holds uh, and uh, an honors bachelor of law from University Université de Montréal and a magister juris in European and comparative law from University of Oxford. She is the author of Changing the Rules of the Game in which she shares her vision for public policy and civic engagement. She was named Young Global Leader by the uh, World Economic Forum. So um, thank you very much, Minister Jari, for joining us this evening. It's uh, very much appreciated, and we're yeah. certainly looking forward to hearing, uh, to hearing your, your words and your insight into the present situation. Um, the uh, questions are actually uh, in two categories, just for those that are listening. Uh, one is called the mitigation phase, which is where we're in now, and that's followed by four questions uh, dealing with recovery. So, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll go along that, that route. 
the first question is, uh, Minister Jari, um, uh, we appreciate, yes? Oops. First, thank you for the introduction. Oh, sorry, go ahead, please. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, great French. Très bon français. Merci, merci. <laughs> uh, I think also I have colleagues like you mentioned on the Zoom. Uh, I have fans that away in Chris Biddle, but I know uh, that are on this. So thank okay. you folks for being there. Um, and I'm a big fan of Niagara. Uh, I even launched uh, I've been two times in the, in the past year, uh, three times, actually. Um, and so, uh, and, uh, and, and I had the chance to talk to the mayor a bit earlier today as well. And I'm very much aware that the tourism sector is uh, key to the success of the region and deeply impacted. So I know you'll have questions about that and I'll, it will be a pleasure for me to answer them. Do you think it's worth it for me to go through all the different types of measures? It would take me five minutes, uh, the economic measures, or it's not worth it at this point, your members know about them and let's go directly into questions. Um, actually, it's my mistake. Uh, we were anticipating you uh, uh, having an introduction of that manner and I went right into the questions and I missed <laughs> that. So, so it's my mistake as moderator. Uh, long day for me. So, uh, so, yeah, so my I apologies, know. but yeah, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Perfect. Uh, so three priorities for government. Well, first and foremost, thank you for all being here. It's a pleasure and taking the time. I know this is usually the uh, cinq à sept, uh, you know, time of the day. So if you want to enjoy <laughs> while listening to us, please go ahead. Um, so uh, three priorities for government. First and foremost, obviously, is protecting people's health and lives and, and making sure that people can uh, follow the strict regulation, the, the strict advice of our public health authorities. In order for, for, for doing that, people need to know that they'll be able to pay their rent, pay their mortgages and, and put food on the table. So as there was a lot of anxiety and still a lot, there's still a lot of anxiety, we came up with the new CRB, CERB, the $2,000 amount per month. And that was to deal with uh, the financial pressures of, of Canadians and have a people first approach. Um, and this was also to make sure that uh, we would provide a new social safety net. At this point, we didn't have time to create new programs. We just went ahead, decided to expand massively the definition of EI, and that's how we went, the, went ahead. It includes also uh, more funding through um, GST payments. Also, some of you may have received checks in the, from, in the mail. Uh, and also uh, in, in increase to the Canada Child Benefit, of $300 per child. Um, and then eventually we move to our third party, which is the economic response and economic package. Um, at the beginning, when we were making all these Zooms and having conversations internally, our reading of the crisis was, okay, there will be a cash crunch for one month, maybe two, um, this is an issue of liquidity. We need to work with the banking sector, with the BDC, EDC, and that's the way we will be dealing with cash flows of businesses. And, the, you know, so we saw that as a movement in demand. So there would be maybe no demand for one or two months, and then demand would be back. And we just needed to help businesses to, to, to deal with fixed costs. But more we were having these conversations, and definitely I had lots of conversations with Karen Beattie, the, the president of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. Um, more we were hearing that, um, the reality of, on the ground, more we moved and decided to go into much more a subsidy approach, where we were really going to help more businesses to deal with their burn rate, so their fixed costs. And uh, that's why we came up with a wage subsidy. Uh, it used to be 10%, now it's 75%. Good news is first checks will be sent in three days or bank transfers on May 7th, it will be started. Uh, if businesses have not yet registered and folks are, are, are watching us, please go ahead on the CRA uh, website. It is the way to go ahead. Uh, so that's the first thing. Second thing is we decided to create a new program, which was the SIBA account, the $40,000 loan for SMEs, for small businesses. Um, 
and that included a ten thousand dollar subsidy uh, because if you reimburse within two years you'll be able to keep ten thousand uh, dollars and then we went ahead also with rent relief meanwhile postponing in time the payments of gst and corporate taxes and and custom duties um, so the rent relief program will be coming up very quickly mid-may um, and finally uh, because we were seeing businesses falling through the cracks uh, sometimes they didn't have access to the forty thousand dollar loan sometimes the wage subsidy didn't apply to them. We decided to expand all, again the safety nets and tighten it. And uh, we decided to uh, go ahead and support more our regional development agencies, which in Niagara would be FedDev. And that's the agency I'm in charge of. And so FedDev is an economic development agency that is there to support businesses uh, that are falling through the cracks. And so definitely, uh, I'll be coming out with the details of the new programs very shortly. And, uh, and we will be sending the details also to you, Vern, to make sure you can provide that to your members, uh, because that will be helpful. So that's my take on all the different things. There are also many for the arts and sector, arts and cultural and sports sector and the indigenous businesses, please feel free to ask questions if you have any uh, regarding also these uh, much more targeted helps. So thanks. Great, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and, um, and a great rendition. It's the nicest, uh, it's the nicest summary I've heard yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I can give you the bullet points if you want. That's ideal. <laughs> um, shall we go into the questions? Please go ahead. Great. Uh, Minister Jari, uh, we appreciate you joining us uh, virtually and answering questions put for, forward by our membership uh, here at the Chamber. Obviously, uh, we're in unprecedented times and the government has announced a number of measures uh, to respond to the COVID crisis. Things are moving very quickly. Uh, can you give us a broad overview of what government has announced to date? I think we've done that. Uh, is there anything else in the overview that you wanted to uh, talk about regarding supporting businesses or should we move on to the next question? Next question. I think Great. at the end of the day, I would like to have a dialogue, a conversation. Perfect. Because what I would be helpful for me, Vern, is if there aren't any gaps that we can identify. And if there's still, you know, no gaps, well, perfect. You know, we can just provide the information. So that's, that's great. Good. Question number two is, can you tell us more about the uh, Regional Relief and Recovery Fund, uh, which will be administered uh, through Canada's Regional Development Agencies, RDAs, including FedDev Ontario, uh, which yeah. you've already mentioned, and Community Futures Organizations. Yeah. I know this falls under your mandate. Uh, can you provide us with more information on which businesses will be eligible for support? Good. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, we know that some businesses are falling through the cracks. The issue of sole proprietorship being one of them. And so uh, the idea is to make sure, and I'll be, like I said, releasing uh, the details very soon, but the idea is to make sure that if you don't have access to the WHSD or you don't have access to SIBA account, you have another tool in the toolbox, in your toolbox, and you can go see FedDev. Now, I know that FedDev is not as well known as a regional development agency that maybe, I don't know if there are Atlanticers on this call, uh, but ACOA is very well known as Atlantic Canada. Why? Because FedDev is only, is, is only dates to the, the economic crisis of 2008 and has been uh, really helping on the ground uh, businesses since then. So um, they, the community futures organization, organizations are sometimes a bit more known. Both FedDev and the community futures organizations will have a substantial increase in their budget. So if you know your community futures organizations, please go ahead and already have these conversations because as soon, the idea is to make sure that we can send money and, and, and help businesses as soon as possible. It will be loans. So it will be to provide liquidity at interest-free loans. So that's the idea. Uh, and to cover the issue of wage subsidy and SIBA. The only place where there will be much more subsidies coming will be uh, for non-for-profit organizations, including, for example, the Chamber of Commerce. 
or the, you know, an economic development agency that are trying to really uh, help businesses uh, and organize them. So that's the idea. And, uh, and, and it's the first time that FedDev will be playing a role in economic stability. Usually it would be the BDC and banks, but since we know that there's still cracks in the system, I think this is a, a first time we we're really showing FedDev and the community producers organization um, how much we trust them and we value their work. Because usually, uh, certainly FedDev is much more in times of economic stimulus to, to you know, support and drive demand, uh, which is not where we're at yet. So that's why I think FedDev is just key right now. Not bad. And we have a community futures office in Niagara, so that's uh, nice. It's yeah. uh, centrally located and uh, a very active organization. So yeah, it'd be good to see that happen. And they're doing great work. And if they're on this line, in this, on the Zoom, thank yeah. you. And I know that uh, definitely Vance and Chris have been strong advocates in favor of the community futures organization. Yeah, and ours works very hard. I know that for, for a fact. So nice to see. Okay. Um, next question. Um, mm -hmm. is uh, the hospitality and tourism sectors um, mm -hmm. have been hit hard with COVID. Uh, what can be done further to support the small and medium-sized businesses in restaurants, hotels, and tourism sectors? So I'm very much aware that the, 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 the hospitality and tourism sector has been hard hit. I'm the minister also in charge of tourism. And uh, I've been uh, having conversations with my counterparts at the uh, provincial and territorial level. I've been in close contact with Lisa McLeod every, every week. We have a, uh, have a uh, weekly phone call and uh, we talk about what's going on. Uh, and I, I hear tourism operators being extremely preoccupied and I know that there's a lot of anxiety. And, uh, and it is normal. I, just to give you an example, I was on a phone call with the G20 ministers of tourism uh, last week. And uh, so international, at, at the international level, tourism is down right now by 45%. We expect that it will be down by the end of the summer by 70%. So we know that the sector is hard hit. And it's not only in Canada, it is in the US, it is in Italy, it is in you know, uh, the Middle East, it's everywhere. So we know we have to engage internationally about this. What we agreed, all the ministers of the G20 together, is that we will be going ahead by supporting first and foremost, local tourism. And then we'll go into regional tourism. And then we'll go into national tourism and then international. So we all know that because of the fact there's no vaccine, we have to find a way to have the right balance between public health and tourism and economic development. And so, and we wouldn't, it would be really difficult. I would say very damaging if we would go ahead and, and you know, do a lot of, uh, really, really uh, proactive marketing approaches, which is are very different from what other countries would be doing and not being able to deal with the health impacts. Uh, and so based on that, I'm very much aware that there's, there, you know, we need to be there for the tourism sector. I know that this is a challenge, one of the biggest that the sector has gone through in years and we were so proud of our numbers it was going so well in 2019 it was like our best ever year uh, and even internationally one out of four jobs in 2019 were created in the tourism sector wow so that's why we know that what we're trying to do right now is look at the existing measures see how we can tweak them the wage subsidy the seabed count if people are falling through the cracks in the tourism sector, go see FedDev. And I think we need to continue the conversation as well. Cool. Go see FedDev. It's good. I'd like the slogan. <laughs> <laughs> um, will the government consider extending financial assistance programs in the event that restrictions uh, have been extended, uh, have to be extended as well? 
The question is yes. The idea was to make sure that we would be there during the pandemic, during the time that there was a lockdown and that things were not going well and the, uh, the economy is pretty much frozen. So if we need to, to you know, be in lockdown longer because of the fact that we're not flattening the curve, we will do that. Um, but I think we're looking at what the Ford government is doing right now as they're reopening the economy and the you know the CRB the CERB the two thousand dollar per month is 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 finalizing in June. The wage subsidy was for March, April, and May, and so we'll see. We will adapt. That's the idea because we know Vern, and I know you'll be. I don't know the questions. You didn't send me the questions yet, but uh, I I guess you'll be asking me a question about recovery. My point is everything we're doing right now to help our businesses survive is key to the economy and the recovery. The economy was doing well before. It is because of the pandemic that we were frozen and, and it stopped. So what we need to do is basically provide the right liquidity, be there for them, and that will help us in terms of recovery. Nice. Um, <clears throat> it segues into the recovery phase. So um, the uh -huh. next question, I, the next question I have relates to that. Um, would the government uh, consider an interdisciplinary economic recovery task force uh, with representation from business, industry, finance, and other key stakeholders? Yes. Uh, you did that uh, fairly well with the uh, Perrin Beatty and the Canadian Chamber and so forth. I read some articles on that. That uh, that that's really what happened initially too, wasn't it? Yeah. That's it. I think um, by working with the chambers, Chamber of Commerce, by working with the unions, by working with um, people all around the country from the manufacturing side, the tourism side, that's how we were able to get the information and make the right policy decisions. You know, we're looking at what other countries are doing. But what we know now is that we're the country that gives the most to people and businesses of all the G7. We know that. But we know that we were in a better fiscal position than all the other G7 countries. And we know that what we're doing now will help us to deal with bouncing back. Now, the only caveat to this is that we need to flatten the curve. And we need to make sure that there's no surges in the spread of the virus. And that's why everything we'll be doing is based on, on, on public health advice. Because what can be most damaging to the economy is actually not following science. And I think that of all our economic measures, that's the most important one. Makes sense. Without having to have a some kind of repeat repercussion of it all. Of course, yeah. that's it. Um, next question is, um, what is your strategy for the tourism industry post COVID? Um, can you share your thinking on how um, the tourism can be revived and what the government will do to support its recovery? Uh, you did mention the fact that we'd be going in phases from local, regional and, uh, and international. Yeah. Um, but, um, but is there anything else that perhaps uh, could be in the works regarding, uh, regarding giving it a life support? After? Well, we Dr. will COVID. want to, we will want to work with the sector to find the you know uh, really get to uh, the point of view of different people. Um, I think that uh, we we came up with the um, uh, small uh, business approach. Sorry, no, it's okay. Bless you. <laughs> <Okay>. Zoom <laughs> <laughs> so a small uh, business approach, but what we're thinking about also is, a, is, and we will be announcing soon, is a medium sized and larger sized business. We know we haven't gotten there, but we know we will get there. Uh, that will have an impact also on some players in the travel sector, airline sector, basically that are so key to the tourism sector. Wow. Uh, and I, I, I think about also some hoteliers that may not have access to the small business support, but may have access to some of the measures 
that uh, we will be looking at to provide always liquidity. Uh, so that um, I think also that uh, we have Destination Canada. Destination Canada before, uh, so I was a Minister of Tourism last year. And when I was appointed in charge of uh, Destination Canada uh, and in charge of the tourism sector, what we looked at was the capacity for Destination Canada not only do international marketing, but also drive much more domestic demand. And I'm happy we did that at the time. Um, and to drive demand, not only during big summer months, we know Niagara is packed in July, but also during shoulder seasons. Um, and Vance really is a strong advocate for the tourism sector. So we work together a lot on that and on, on making sure that there would be a national strategy on tourism. Uh, but what we did was to increase the possibility for Destination Canada to play a bigger role in supporting domestic tourism. So as we're looking at bouncing back and supporting more of the domestic tourism approaches, done by you know, the Niagara reg region, the, the Ontario um, uh, you know, uh, Tourism Board, and well, we can definitely partner because usually our money would be, there's a $100 million budget at Third Destination Canada. Usually it's really to support uh, our Canada's tourism brand in the UK, in France, in, in China, and in, in the US. That's what we do but we're looking at to see how we can deal with much more our new reality. So that would be my take on it. Cool. But we'll move in a, in the right way. Nice. Um, once COVID is behind us, um, how might the federal role and function in economic development change? I think you've spoken a little bit to that regarding tourism, but perhaps on a, on a broader base, do we see, um, do we see any, any DNA changes in terms of um, in terms of your ministry? Well, in my mandate letter, um, and I don't know if it's still, you know, uh, I had the the um, I had the mandate to rethink uh, and our uh, regional development agency. Wow. Uh, how I see things, maybe because I ran to become mayor of Montreal years ago, I like being close to the ground, understanding what's going on on the field and really being able to develop the, the, you know, the ideas, the policy decisions, but much more seeing how it's landing and what's the impact on people's lives. And so definitely what we want to do with FedDev is that they're the government of proximity. The, you know, they're the um, ears and eyes on the ground for the federal department. You know, it's, there, there are not a lot of federal departments that have um, a presence as much as FedDev uh, has and could be having. And, uh, and that's definitely something we have in mind. Uh, and I think it, as, as I said at the beginning, you know, there's, um, it was created in 2008 for, to deal with the economic crisis. Um, I think we're still in the stabilization mode, stopping the bleeding, trying to tweak things. I think we'll be in the restarting the economy mode, and then there will be the recovery, and we'll see whether, it, whether it's worth it to stimulate demand, and if that's the case, maybe in certain sector, but, and, and not others, we'll see. But FedDev will be there to play a role, and I, 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 I would love and I'm convinced Vance and Chris and all colleagues will agree with me that they're the closest to ground possible while they're still a federal agency. Nice, nice. Um, one thing that comes to mind is, um, um, as the next question is, um, we perhaps are seeing a, a reversal of um, globalism to protectionism uh, you know, all, all over the world. And uh, if not for, um, you know, N95 masks or whatever else, uh, we're wondering whether, uh, you know, the, this interdependence is, is, is a vulnerability to our country. And, and I don't know whether you uh, see um, a, a, a shift in that, in that way. Um, obviously, Canada is not going to declare a policy at this point in time, but um, 
um, watching from your from your viewpoint, what's happening around the world? Do you see this as perhaps a trend, and uh, how does that affect economic development? Okay, so I would say three things about that. I think that um, we will we this pandemic has given us a clear message as to the importance of having our own supply chain, particularly in terms of medical equipment. And I think in that sector, things will, will change radically because we were able to create a supply chain by taking businesses in southwestern Ontario up to with businesses in New Brunswick and Quebec and basically make sure that they would be at the core of creating masks because they had the textile or the, uh, you know, the ingredients and then the workforce to basically build test kits uh, N95 masks, gowns, ventilators, etc. So we've not only helped retool these businesses uh, through federal support, but also given them contracts to produce. And so I think more than ever and in the future, these types of equipment will be made by and for Canadians. Um, so that's for the supply chain in that sector. and. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's protectionism or not. What I know is that's definitely a question of saving lives and protecting. It's a question of public health. As for the other sectors, I think Canada's economy is based on export. And we're 36 million sounds a lot, but can be sm quite small. And so we will need to defend an international rule based order based on the fact that we have access to the US that Mexico, we can have access also to Europe and other G7 countries and most countries as, you know, as possible because we can produce and we can export. And, uh, and that's not the case. Well, we have a problem as a mid-sized power. Uh, so that will definitely be our take on this. And uh, uh, I think the third thing I would talk about is we're not the only countries facing this issue. The US is, Europe is, all countries are dealing with the fact that there was instability on financial markets. There is an issue with the fact that the governments, governments were there to be the backbone of the economy for some time. Uh, and so I think there will be good conversations between the G7 and the G20 ministers of finance and, and pre, pre, prime ministers and presidents, leaders, uh, to see what can be done to stabilize the economy following the pandemic. Uh, because we've never seen that since the Second World War. Following the Second World War, there were really good international con, you know, conversations. And I think we should bear that in mind since the, um, uh, how can I say, not only the impact, but the breadth of this crisis is at the is is definitely at a level that requires more international cooperation. There, there's been a movement afoot in the last um, hmm, four or five years regarding export diversification, and uh, do, do we see that then continuing as well, based on what you said? You said what diversification? Um, export diversification. Yeah, of course. I I, I think you know there's there's definitely. A, the importance of supporting our tech sector, supporting much more Canadian businesses, um, making sure that we have the strong businesses that are part of an ecosystem that really supports then a supply chain. So how to be able to keep our strategic businesses. Uh, and I think, you know, I've seen the evolution of Niagara over the past 20 years. I was there in my early twenties, well, you know, late teens and uh, you guys are just in a perfect example of diversification uh, and from the wine industry the agricultural sector uh, also developing uh, you know how can I say the hospitality the tourism sector Niagara Falls is known by everybody in the world so we need to be there to support our strategic businesses as they're facing real real issues and at the same time promote the local brands that, uh, that are fundamental to the local economy and that are the gems uh, of, of, of you know, the country. So promoting local 
products and local, um, how can I say, um, uh, purchases is definitely something that is important. I think it shows economic solidarity. I agree. Yeah. Um, next question is, uh, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're down to, uh, uh, 10 feet above, uh, above ground level. Um, we have a small tour operator, uh, that does tours, uh, for the motor coach industry. Uh, my business is over at the moment. Uh, my, my question has, uh, is, has the motor coach issues been discussed yet as buses are very much like the airline industry? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I haven't heard a question specific on that, but, um, I know that uh, my colleague, Mark Garno, who's the Minister of Transport, has uh, definitely heard from the motor coach uh, sector. Uh, and so I would love to hear what's the reality, what's going on in terms of if we could get more information. Um, my, some members of my team are on this call, uh, Reed, who works with me, and we would love to follow up. Great. Uh, another one related uh, to, in a similar manner to uh, to small tourism is uh, can the rent subsidy program be extended to cover a uh, portion of the mortgages for business owners who have their places of business and home in the same location? Oh, that's the first time I hear that question. That's a tricky one. Uh, that's a tricky one. So the details have not been announced uh, for the rent relief. Uh, and so they will be announced soon. It will be administered by the CMHC, so uh, and it will be a um, forgivable loan uh, that will be uh, provided to the landlord. Uh, obviously, we want to get to how can I say? We want to get to people to to make sure that we can help them, but of course, we want to make sure that there's a right balance and that uh, not all Canadians are paying for 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 things that could be seen as something that is, uh, um, you know, not necessarily reasonable. So I think the right balance is important, but I hear that there can be issues with the fact that you may be working from home. And uh, in that sense, sometimes there can be some issues. I don't know how your home is organized and, uh, and I, I don't know the details, but uh, we'll be coming up with the details soon. Nice. Um, similar question, is the rent program going to be reviewed as it is very demanding for small landlords? Well, we were able to get a deal with all provinces and territories within a week. And that, that was really something, quite frankly, when this never happens. Uh, so it shows how much um, this issue was a uh, priority. Usually, let's be frank, uh, the question of rent is much more provincial issue uh, because the federal government doesn't have jurisdiction over landlords and tenants relations. Um, this is really something that Ontario would. But we saw it as a way to make sure that we would be reducing pressure on businesses and dealing with the issue of fixed costs. So why did we come up with the CMHC and dealing with mortgages it was the only way for us at the federal government to get to landlords. We don't have data of, about lessees and, 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 and tenants and landlords. You know, the province would. So uh, that's why we uh, came up with this program. And uh, we hope that the, uh, the province also will be working on uh, the fact that some landlords may be reluctant to go ahead and reduce rent. Um, this is unfortunate because this really has an impact on, on, on people's livelihoods and their sur the, the, the very survival of many of our small businesses. Um, <clears throat> question here is question for um, um, uh, Minister Shadi. Um, does she anticipate any further support for the charitable sector to help offset the impact of COVID beyond the wage subsidy? Uh, some have suggested providing enhanced tax credits for donations uh, and or a federal, and I just lost it, one second. <laughs> um, oh golly, where to go? Uh, one second, I got it coming up here. Uh, um, 
my goodness, my um, my um, my chat line just just uh, jumped all over on me. Uh, bear with me here. Um, okay. One second. Um, A tax credit on what? Um, it was primarily for golly, they're gone. It was it was uh, it was taken away. I, I didn't see where it went. Um, well, I can answer what I have as of now, Vern. So we decided to go ahead and move our position about the wage subsidy to make sure that it would include only businesses, uh, non-for-profits uh, that are seeing a, a downturn in terms of their fundraising. So if you're a charitable organization, a non-for-profit, and you are, you, you have access to government funding, that's not going down. So you can't show that you've, you've incurred the loss but that your fundraising activities are down because you can't fundraise because there's no event possible right now, no gatherings. Well, we've, we've made sure that for non-for-profits, we would be only looking at fundraising. What we will be doing also for some non-for-profits in the economic development sector, such as the Chamber of Commerce, uh, there will be funding through FedDev. Uh, so, if the uh, chamber has an issue in terms of fundraising and is not able to have access to wage subsidy, uh, we will be looking at not loans, but sometimes uh, direct support, so subsidies for, uh, for the organizations. So um, basically, Vern, if, if the chamber is facing that issue, please feel free to contact the team uh, because we want to make sure that you guys are strong because more than ever, chambers are key to make sure to organize the, um, the interest of your members and to help us then identify the gaps and do better policy making. And at the same time, we can work with you to provide the information to your members uh, because we need to bring as much certainty as possible to the business sector as they're taking really important decisions. Nice. Um... Another question here is, uh, bless you, <laughs> can uh, Ms. Jolly, Jolly uh, talk about farmers a bit, please? Uh, although it's not your sector, but um, perhaps you can provide some insight. So um, the Minister of Agriculture, um, Marie-Claude Bibot, has been uh, working on different scenarios. The first one is, in, as you know, is increasing uh, farm credit uh, by, I think it was $5 billion. So to provide more liquidity to agricultural um, you know, entrepreneurs and leaders and farmers. Uh, so that's first thing. Um, and I know she's working on different things right now, so I'll let her uh, address the issue. But we're very much seized with the fact that we need to uh, address the issue of food security. We need to make sure that uh, we can help her or, uh, you know, farmers deal with the fact that there may be less people working in the fields right now because of sometimes there's less temporary foreign workers. And so we've, we, we're very much aware of that and that sometimes the season has been tough over the past year. And so that's why um, she, she's looking at different things right now. Nice. I don't want to scoop her, Vern. Good. Um... Here's a very risky question, parce que mon français est très rouillé, mais nous avons une question en français. OK, c'est bon. Bonjour, Madame Jolie. Avec les foyers de soins de longue durée, mm -hmm. euh, qui sont sévèrement touchés par, euh, par cette pandémie, euh, est-ce que le gouvernement fédéral pense investir dans le développement de la construction des foyers afin d'améliorer la situation immédiate et future, principalement pour les foyers francophones, en situation de minorité. Si oui, est-ce que euh, vous pouvez nous diriger euh, vers quel département pour, euh, qui yeah. pourrait nous aider et euh, à entamer la conversation? Merci. Uh, shall I, shall I, shall I uh, translate that? Or, uh... Yeah, please. I think it's worth it. It's a good question. Okay, great. Um, the question here, it's, it's a, a, as, um, as Minister Jody says, it's a good one. It, it's, um, uh, we have all of these seniors' homes uh, that have been severely affected um, by the pandemic, um, needless to say. 
Um, and does the federal government um, uh, have any intentions of investing in the development of constructing uh, new homes for the aged um, to, assist it, to assist in the immediate and the future uh, needs? And uh, also with regards to Francophone um, uh, seniors homes, where the Francophone community is in a situation of minorities. Um, and um, if possible, could you direct uh, us to what might be a proper department that could help us with this conversation? Uh, merci pour la question. Ça me fait plaisir d'entendre une question en français. Merci, Vern, pour ton français, parce qu'il est très bon. Merci. Um, <laughs> et puis, j'ai eu l'occasion d'aller au foyer Richelieu uh, avec mon collègue Vance, uh, by the way, uh, Fort Colburn, uh, uh, il y a à peine six mois. J'ai eu l'occasion de rencontrer l'équipe, rencontrer les travailleurs de première ligne, les aînés. C'était extraordinaire, je me rappelle très bien. On avait eu l'occasion d'avoir aussi des enfants qui étaient venus sur place, qui avaient chanté, notamment notre place, qui est le fameux hymne franco-ontarien. Donc, je suis consciente qu'il y a un enjeu auprès de nos aînés qui sont en situation minoritaire. D'ailleurs, j'ai demandé à mon ministère de regarder comment on peut travailler ensemble pour aborder cette question-là. Euh, quant à la question plus large de savoir euh, euh, est-ce qu'on va soutenir euh, les, euh, les euh, euh, dans le fonds foyer pour euh, personnes âgées, euh, ben c'est sûr que les résidences présentement nous préoccupent énormément. C'est extrêmement préoccupant et ça fait mal au cœur de voir qu ce qui se passe dans certaines résidences. Alors nous, on va vouloir travailler avec le gouvernement d'Ontario et en gardant toujours la lentille francophone parce que c'est important de protéger nos aînés qui parlent français et qui ont tellement donné à notre, à notre société. Donc, je vous envoie beaucoup d'amour et je suis très contente d'avoir l'occasion de vous entendre dans le contexte de ce Zoom. Merci. Um, would you like to provide an English version as well? Yes. So, folks, I'm the Minister of Official Languages, so I'm used to doing translation, I guess. Um, so the question in the context was, uh, my answer was basically, uh, I had the chance to go and meet people at Foyer Richelieu, which is a long-term uh, long care facility in Fort Colburn, Wood Vance, by the way. Um, and I had the chance to, uh, uh, to meet the frontline workers and, and the, uh, uh, the uh, elders, and there were also kids at the time. That was six, six months ago, so it was a, a really nice um, um, experience. Um, and so um, I'm I'm pr very preoccupied and heartbroken by what's going on with, in certain long-term care facilities. I'm in Montreal and uh, in Quebec right now, uh, and uh, even in my own writing, I'm seeing it. It's uh, it's it's devastating. Uh, so definitely we will want to make sure to have conversations regarding the fact of protecting our Francophone community and particularly the uh, elderly. So I'll I already tasked my uh, department to look at different scenarios. As for funding of our long-term care facilities, I think we'll have to have a good discussions around this country about what's going on in our long-term care facilities like the Prime Minister mentioned and also partner with Ontario to see what can be done. Great, thank you. Um, as a grape grower, um, oh golly, it jumped again. Uh, just so I get to read it, it jumps on me. My apologies so for that to happen. Um, and I'll read another one here because it jumped to this one. As we get into the recovery, uh, how will the federal government increase support of applied research in academic institutions so they can work with companies to help them develop new products, processes, and services? Mm -hmm. Well, I think different things. Uh, we've invested massively in research. And right now what we need to do is stop the bleeding in the research sector because they're not, uh, they, they, they're at risk and we need to be there to help. Sometimes they don't always have access to the wage subsidy. So that's something we're looking at. Um, the other thing also is we know that, and we've seen it with, um, you know, uh, the, the, um, uh, what has been done uh, at uh, Brock University in St. Catharines, along with uh, lots of grape and uh, grape growing growers and 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 winemakers, the great relationship that has been going on to make sure that we can always adapt and better uh, the you know the 
the processes and the quality of products. Um, we know that research is key in, in our country and for different uh, sectors, but also in the recovery. So yes, we'll be there to support the, the sector. I, I think when I asked, uh, when I answered your question a bit earlier regarding the agricultural sector, I'm very much aware that different types of, uh, of agricultures being done in, uh, in uh, Niagara and the Niagara region. But I had the chance um, a couple of times to uh, uh, visit some grape growers and, 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 and winemakers. And uh, it would be great to know how things are going uh, for them Vern, uh, to see whether, uh, you know, it's, if you could give me that feedback. Uh, how how things are evolving in the region, because I I I have many friends that can tell me under a case, you know, people can tell me how things are going, but going through the chamber and and knowing a bit more concretely what's going on would be helpful, uh, because for me there are at at between the agricultural sector and the tourism sector, and so that's why I would love to have that point of view, and I it's. You know, the biggest hub in the country is is definitely in your neck of the woods. Um, actually, I'll continue with a question that I did start with the grape growers because I found it again, and it's um, asked by somebody who uh, certainly is representative of the industry. So I, I think it's mm -hmm. worth repeating it if you don't mind. Um, yeah, following the following uh, this question about farming, um, we uh, are grape growers and a large part of the supply chain for wine. Um, we are facing a bleak harvest as wineries are shuttered and as you point out, foot track will be slow to, uh, to return. Having the federal support for 100% Canadian grown uh, will be critical for our future. Uh, can the new FedDev program assist us in any way? Welcome back mm. to Niagara. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I know that the, you know, Debbie Zimmerman has <laughs> she must be on this call. <laughs> I know Debbie. Uh, she's a strong advocate. So yeah. um, uh, let's have the conversation. If basically, if you don't have access to the wage subsidy and see the account, and you're falling through the cracks, if that's the case, you know we know that the tourism sector is not completely, um, you know, is is. Um, is, is impacted by uh, what's going on and that some measures need to be tweaked. And so that's why, like you said, go see FedDev. I think that's, that's, that's a, a good way to deal with it. Uh, another question is, um, will the government do, uh, what will the government do when landlords do not agree to participate in the rent relief program? Uh, will the current program businesses uh, with a credit with the current program businesses uh, are at the mercy of landlords? Mm -hmm. It's so frustrating when they don't participate because at the end of the day, businesses need to have that rent relief, uh, and that's incumbent on landlords. And I'm frustrated. I know a lot of people can be frustrated when that's the case because it's a choice between basically reducing by 25% maybe your revenues coming from your rent or losing a business. Um, and so, yeah. as I said a bit earlier, we're not in charge of that relationship between landlords and tenants or lessees. But what we can do is do moral persuasion uh, really and, and work with the province for them to do moral persuasion and even go further if possible. I certainly raised it with my colleague Lisa McLeod, who I get along well with, um, and uh, and I know that many of my, my colleagues have been raising it uh, because that's the best way to make sure that our businesses survive. And by the way, ninety-seven percent of of real estate in Canada is mortgaged; only three percent is not, and so. That's why going through the CMHC, so through the mortgage system, is a very effective way. As for the 3%, we're looking at details how we can get to unmortgaged buildings and, and therefore their land, their, their, their uh, owners. Um, the art sector, um, as with the tourism sector, uh, has seen a significant slowdown. 
-hmm. Will there be similar supports uh, made available to the art sector, both to help get through the shutdown and to assist with recovery? So yes, we came up with a new funding, uh, you know, mechanism. It's five hundred million dollars for the arts and sports sector. It's through Heritage Canada. The details of it will be uh, announced very, very soon. Uh, it will be for non for profits in the sector. I know the Shaw Festival is definitely something that everybody knows about and impacted by what's going on. And so I hope that the Shaw Festivals are already talking to their uh, contacts. Uh, their contact people at Heritage. Um, so that would be my first, take, uh, first thing on it. We are also looking at, you know, big events. Uh, I know Stratford is, uh, is, is, is not close to Niagara, it's further down, but definitely we're looking at how we can deal with the Stratford Festival, the Calgary Stampede, uh, Toronto Pride, and these bigger events. Nice. Um, interesting question here. Uh, good morning from Australia. <laughs> I'm a member of the Australian Institute of International Affairs. Uh, it is my honor to meet uh, with uh, the Honorable um, uh, Melanie, Jolie, Melanie Jolie in this platform. Uh, could I please ask uh, the minister um, um, how Canada and Australia could take advantage of the strong alliance for economic development and dealing with global crisis? Thank you very much. Okay, that's a that's a good question. It will be my last answer because I have to go. Right? Absolutely, it, it is time up too. So yeah. So we know that the you know Australia is part of the Five I. Uh, we we've always worked with our our allies, and so there are different ways to make sure that we can support each other. Um, and I would love to learn more about what's being done in Australia right now. Uh, so if he's willing to send up information, it would be great. And, uh, and so if I can give my closing remarks, Vern. Please. Because I have another Zoom after this. Another uh, Zoom, my goodness. You so, have fortitude, you have fortitude. So um, I just wanted to thank you for your availability and uh, your leadership. Uh, thanks to all the people uh, working in the tourism sector in Niagara, I know these are very anxious times and difficult times and I hear you. Uh, and so it would be great to continue to work together. Uh, we've always been strong allies, so let's continue to do just that and to defend our sector together. Um, thank you also to Vance and, uh, and Chris uh, that have been also a strong advocate for the sector. Um, I don't know if there are other MPs on this call. If that's the case, thank you for your service and your work. Uh, and at the end of the day, the most important thing is to make sure that we're confident in the future. And so let's work uh, as you guys are crossing the bridge, uh, trying to get on the other side of the shore, we'll be there holding your hand to make sure you don't fall and that you can get to a brighter place. So keep it up, continue your great work. And uh, let's talk in a couple of weeks, we could organize that burn again uh, to make sure we see how things are landing. And I thank you very, very much for your valuable time, your wonderful insight, and uh, certainly a pleasure. Ma plaisir, enchanté de votre connaissance. Et puis à la prochaine. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Bye, everybody. Thank bye you. Bye.